government, after months of trial and years of preparation for this case, that prosecutors say was a huge fundraiser for Hamas, convicted of funneling millions of dollars to the Palestinian militant group Hamas. Twelve million dollars to Hamas. وجهت إلى المسؤولين الخمسة مئة وثمانية. The government had to prove their guilt beyond a reasonable doubt to a jury. Involved a conspiracy that spanned a, a 13 year period to support the terrorist organization Hamas. لم يتم انتهاك للقوانين والمعايير القانونية والإنسانية كما جرى في قضية الهولوكوست Foundation. We are hunting down the murderers you support and we will hunt you down. This case is unjust and unfair to not only the individuals that are involved in it but the entire Muslim community in the world. For years, the Richardson-based charity has been under suspicion, accused of funding terrorists. To only decide in 2001 that this work was illegal didn't make any sense. This time with sentences ranging from 15 to 65 years in prison for five HLF members. I definitely said that this was a political trial and that these were political prisoners uh, and that it was based on association not based on facts. He was the only one willing to speak out, and he said the government's case was full of macaroni. This was and clearly a political trial, and it, it was a shame. It was a shame of, um, on the Americans, and we should not have let it happen, and we should not let it continue. زوجي كان يشتغل مدير مكتب رابط الشباب المسلم العربي في انديانا فهناك انا اجتنا سنابل بنتي فلما انولدت انولدت كانت عندها الثلاسيميا مرض الثلاسيميا ومرة ثانية اسمه cystic fibrosis and cystic fibrosis is a, is a lung disease and uh, his daughter needed surgery just to live and Shukri was able to find a charity who funded his daughter's surgery. But Shukri said that changed his life. He said, I am a Muslim and I love to give. So he left his job. He quit. He founded a charity. He put his heart and soul into a charity that grew to be the largest Muslim charity in the United States. The company was founded in 1989 from California. والمؤسسين الرئيسيين كانوا ثلاث أعضاء هم الأخ شكري أبو بكر والأخ غسان عشي والأخ محمد إبراهيم المزين في عام 1991 قررنا كعائلات ومؤسسة قرروا الانتقال إلى تكساس They were mainly giving humanitarian aid to Palestinians in the West Bank and Gaza, as well as uh, the refugee populations in Lebanon and Jordan. And then they also gave to other needy populations across the world. The <laughs> بدأت منذ عام 1994 أساساً صرفت على إنشاء بنية تحتية إنفراستركشر طبية لمحافظة لا تملك أي مقومات العمل الطبي كانت مؤسسة الهولي لن تقدم خدماتها للجمعية الخيرية الإسلامية ولأيتامها بين بين عامي 1998 وحتى عام 2001 وهذه الأموال التي كانت تقدمها مؤسسة الهولي لاند كانت تقدم بشكل متواصل إلى هؤلاء الأيتام أنا شهدت تطور المؤسسة من من عام 1997 كانت بحدود مليون إلى 2 مليون سنويا وكانت بتطور بحيث وصلت في 2001 لحوالي 6 إلى 7 مليون 10% كانت تصرف المصاريف التشغيلية للمؤسسة أكبر 
برنامج تقريبا في حوالي ما يعادل مليون الى الى 2 مليون دولار كانت في برامج الطرود الغذائيه اللي توزع توزع في شهر رمضان المبارك. Throughout the 1990s, there were many claims by uh, Israeli lobby groups like uh, the ADL and the Anti-Defamation League and politicians like Elliot Spitzer and Anthony Weiner and Chuck Schumer. Uh, a lot of these politicians went to Clinton administration and begged Clinton and tried to pressure him to shut down the charity, but Clinton refused to shut down the charity. Israel is against anybody who supports the Palestinian people. And it doesn't mean support in terms of money or arms or anything like that. If you just say, I don't like what Israel is doing to the Palestinian people, you're an enemy to the state. The US government after 9-11 was willing to give up every right it had. I'm ready to give up my civil rights, I'm ready to give up my freedom of speech, I'm ready to give up my privacy. Do whatever you need if it's going to keep some of these crazy terrorists from coming over here killing us. And one of the things it led to was the adoption of a kind of aggressive, preventive law enforcement paradigm in which we used every tool available to go after not just terrorists, but people who we thought or suspected might be engaged in supporting, connected to, associated with terrorists. And often the basis for that might be, you know, associated with terrorists was the Arab Muslim male. The Treasury Department froze the assets and accounts of the Holy Land Foundation in Richardson, Texas, whose money is used to support the Hamas terror organization. The decision was made in 4 March 2001. The decision was made in that time that the Prime Minister of Israel, the former Prime Minister of Sharon, was in the United States, and he was in a visit to the Prime Minister of Israel, and to the Prime Minister of America, in the time of the war on the war, at the time of the Prime Minister of George Bush. In 1 March, the Prime Minister of Israel, the Prime Minister of Israel, وقال لي بأن لدينا معلومات مؤكدة بأنه سيصدر قرار بإغلاق مؤسسة الأرض المقدسة وبأن شارون جاء بملف كامل عن هذه المؤسسة وطلب من الرئيس بوش أن يغلق هذه المؤسسة لأنها داعمة بين قوسين للإرهاب في يوم إغلاق المؤسسة كل موظف في المؤسسة اجوا زاروا الاف بي اي في 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 بيوتهم وكانت تدور بعض الاسلحه حول ما اذا كانت مثلا المؤسسه او اعضاء في المؤسسه بينتفع شخصيا من الاموال اللي تم تجميعها او انه كانت هاي الاموال مثلا تذهب الى مساعده حركه حماس او او اي جناح عسكري في حماس David Offhauser, who was general counsel to the Treasury at the time, said, quote, it was almost comical, end quote. Quote, we just listed out as many of the usual suspects as we could and said, let's go freeze some of their assets. I have my suspicions that Israel was involved in that, but I don't know that. But I do know, because it's been written about and is public now that the Treasury Department literally created scapegoats and said, we have these Palestinians, let's just go out and seize their assets. And that's what they did. There was no hearing, there was no due process, there was nothing. They went in and seized everything, down to the plants. In 2002, the Holy Land Foundation, represented by me and my law partners, filed a lawsuit in Washington, D.C. Uh, to challenge the designation uh, 
uh, as, a, as a terrorist organization. There was a huge record that the government had created, an administrative record, that we had to read, and it was mostly basically garbage. It was, it was newspaper articles, interviews that were translated from Arabic to Hebrew to English, and we discovered when we did our own translations that the translations were completely wrong. Um, that the government was relying on information that was completely, completely false, but it didn't matter. The lawsuit was dismissed by the district court uh, in Washington, D.C. after much briefing and argument. Uh, we uh, took an appeal to the United States Court of Appeals for the D.C. Circuit. It's the, the Court of Appeals that sits in the District of Columbia. Uh, and on appeal to the D.C. Circuit, uh, we lost again uh, the based on secret evidence. Even though we had security clearances at the time, so we should have been able to see this, what the government said was secret evidence, we never saw it. Because we weren't able to see the secret evidence, we weren't able to challenge it. We weren't able to point out ways that it was untrue or incomplete. Uh, the district court, the, that's the trial level court, uh, said that it didn't rely on the secret evidence, but in the appellate court, when we challenged the ruling of the district court, that court did rely on the secret evidence, found it persuasive, said that it was incontrovertible, and ruled against us. تقريبا لما اجي ياخذوا شكري كانت تقريبا الساعة 7 الصبح او قبل هيك شيء كنت أنا مصلية الفجر وقاعدة وكأني بنتظر في شيء يعني ما بعرف عندي كان شعور غريب غسان راح المسجد يصلي الفجر ورجع على أساس ينام لسه يعني تمدد في السرير حظات فجأة سمع دق يعني رهيب على الباب مفزع sleeper so I, I jumped out of bed and I um, rushed to my father's room and he was already wide awake. FBI, open the door! <laughs> عادوني أنا وأمي في في الصالون ودخلوا البيت يعني كأنها بيت. أول ما فتح شكر الباب مسكوا على طول طلعوا برا حطوا الهاند كاف في إيديه وحكوا له دخلوا البيت والمفروض ما يدخلوا البيت. طلعوا فيه انا كثير حركت فبدي اروح يعني احكي مع بابا فيعني واحد كثير كثير كان كبير هيك زي جارد فمسكني وصار يوجع فيه فحكيت له يو نو ليت جو تيك يور هاندز اوف اوف مي مين انت يعني شو تعود ايفن حدا عمره هيك مسكني سو اي ران افتر ماي فادر اند اي اي يلد هيز نيم بابا اند هي مانج رايت بيفور هي واز جونا بي بوشد انتو ذا كار هي مانج تو ستوب and look back at me and say, Baba, keep your head up high because your father did nothing wrong. They took my father and I was sitting there and I saw him put his hand on his hand and he was angry. He was angry and he said, Baba, I'm sorry. ما عرفنا عنهم شيء لعشر ايام، بعد عشر ايام 
تمنا اتصل علينا وحكى لنا انا هيني ام اوكي يعني وبالسجن طبعا افرجوا عنا طلعوا المحاميين راحوا المحاميين طلعوهن على اساس انهم هم امريكان وما في اي اثباتات عليهم فمن حقهم يطلعوا ويتحاكموا هم برا فبس حطوا باجريهم زي البريسلت هاي لحتى يكون اقامه اجباريه طردوه من الشغل اللي كان فيه سيليا بداوز على التهم مع انه ما لا برقوا ولا حكوا عليه جلتي يعني قبل ما عرفوا اصلا القرار طردوه على على السريع وقعد فتره من دون شغل استمر يمكن ست اشهر سبعة اشهر لحد ما قدر يعني يلاقي شيء مشي حاله بعدين فتحوا شركه لإله في الهندسه في عمله الخاص تحجم يعني بشكل كبير لانه كان لازم يقضي وقت طويل مع المحاميين لحسن الحظ انا كنت مدرسه فكان لدي عمل يعني اقتات انا واولادي منه For the next three years, the FBI, the CIA, you know, uh, government officials, prosecutors, they spent almost three or four years looking into the case. The allegation was that there was essentially material support being provided by the Holy Land Foundation to Hamas. And we had to prove that. And you have to, essentially, it's a form which we call the United States money laundering. Material support charges were alleged against all of the individuals, um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Oda, Mr. El Mazain, Mr. Abu Bakr, uh, Mr. Um, uh, Abu Qadr, and Mr. Alashi, and also against the organization itself. There were over 40 charges, as I recall, but primarily it was material support to terrorism and then tax charges. All rise. Please be seated. The government came to a person named Matthew Levitt. Matthew Levitt was a member of the government in what is called the Mekafah of the Irhab al Masrifi. Matthew Levitt is a Jewish 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 it builds grassroots support for the organization. It provides for the families of its operatives. It provides operatives with day jobs. It provides a, a cover of legitimacy for their activities. Certainly no one is going to question the need for charity. Charity is a good thing, except that the operatives are sometimes charity by day and terrorists by night. And it provides an ideal mechanism, uh, not only for raising under the cover of charity, but then transferring and laundering money, not just for the social activities, but for all the activities of the organization. Uh, does Hamas also use it as a tool of recruitment as well? Absolutely. As we mentioned earlier, you know, you get people in the front door, you have an opportunity to interact with them, to uh, spot them, to radicalize and recruit them. Levitt testified as an expert witness opining on essentially given background to the jury on on uh, terrorist organizations and also um, his view of activity uh, taking place in uh, Palestine and Israel. Is that recruitment for the military wing only? No. And what sort of services does the social wing provide for the Palestinian population? Medical services, food, education, a variety of social welfare type services, women's groups, soccer clubs, certainly mosques, you know, study groups, um, a place to go, a wide range of activities. And would you say they use a social welfare activity to win the hearts and minds of the Palestinian people? Exactly what they do. One of the laws that was passed is uh, a law referred to as the material support statute. And the material support statute says that it's against the law for any U.S. citizen or any resident who lives in the United States to provide material support 
to a designated terrorist. For example, if Khalil Meek left Dallas, Texas today after this interview, and I got on a plane and I flew to Somalia, and tomorrow I feed over 200 people, alhamdulillah, but after I feed them, somebody comes up to me and says, Khalil, did you know that three people who came today and ate your food they're associated with a group called Al-Shabaab. Well, Al-Shabaab is designated as a terrorist organization. So technically, I just fed three terrorists. Is that material support? That question was not answered in the statute. It says anything. That's true. But uh, providing material support, in my estimation, is just as important or more important in, in, uh, in being able to advance the goals of a terrorist organization. Now, you have also lectured for an organization called the Jewish Federation, correct? That is right. And that is a fundraising organization for APAC, correct? That would be news to me. The Jewish Federation is the organization that coordinates fundraising of the Jewish community for everything from local services, Jewish and non-Jewish. They do fundraising for Israel also, but I also lecture for Arab think tanks and others as well. My question was, have you spoken at APAC? Is the answer yes or no? I think it's pretty clear the answer is yes. And you have spoken at several of their conferences, haven't you? I have, and often said things they didn't like. The United States um, put on evidence um, over and over again of buses being blown up in Israel, which had violent acts by Hamas, which Holy Land had nothing to do with, but they would try to, and try to develop an atmosphere for the jury of fear about Hamas. Uh, there was a time where the jury left the room and the judge left the room and my father yelled, this is an extension of the Israeli occupation, the Zionist occupation of Palestine. And he was yelling and he was infuriated. And he was yelling because the judge refused, continuously refused to enter evidence that would have shown the kind of work that the Holy Land Foundation was doing. Imagine if you're a juror in Texas and your president from Texas had already told you that this is a terrorist group and they're training kids to come kill you. What kind of an impact would that have? Yes, it had an impact. The judge was so much on the government side that at one point in the first trial, um, I said to the judge, and I can't remember my exact words, but it was something to the effect of the prosecutor sitting over there, Your Honor, we don't need a second prosecutor, and everyone thought that I was going to go to jail that day. Seated. I mean, there was no evidence to establish that the Holy Land Foundation itself was a terrorist organization. That was not the allegation. The allegation was that they were providing material support to a terrorist organization. Uh, does the name of the Calkilia Zakat Committee appear on the Treasury Department list today? No. The uh, Islamic Charity Society of Hebron, does that name appear on the list? Or did it appear on the list as of June 14th, 2001? No. And it doesn't appear there today either, correct? No. I will uh, go through the rest of them collectively and let's see if the answers are the same. Okay. The Tolkarm Zakat Committee, the Nablus Zakat Committee, the Ramallah Zakat Committee, the Janine Zakat Committee, and the Islamic Science and Culture Committee. Is it fair to say that the names of none of those organizations appeared on the Treasury Department list as of June 14th, 2001? Those names do not. And today they don't appear on that list either, correct? Correct. The names of any board members of those ACAD committees appear 
on the Treasury Department list as of June 14th, 2001. Not to my knowledge, but as you said, it is a very big list, but I don't think so. And today? Same. Not to your knowledge? Correct. In, in Holy Land, the government had this anonymous witness who had the name Avi, fake name Avi. In, to my knowledge, there's never been an expert witness in a case, in a criminal case, who was secret the way he was. This was a, a new event. There sometimes have been witnesses who have been secret, but not experts. And have you reviewed records in the course of preparation for your testimony to suggest that the Holy Land Foundation gave money to these same organizations that we've been talking about? Yes. All of them? The question is, where is this charity going? and how it supported the Hamas organization and its objective. I can find several levels. One level is that it support the population, support all the population to win the hearts and minds. We see how they do this. Many examples. There is no secret in the territories who controls these committees. The posters, the ceremonies, they're not hiding this. The opposite. They're trying to suppress the fact that they are part of Hamas and they're showing it. And the person who comes for support of the food knows who supports him. And he's obligated to the organization. This is how they win the hearts and minds, the most simple way, but the most sophisticated way. And he testified that each of these Zakat committees to which the Holy Land Foundation gave money was associated in some fashion with Hamas. Um, he also uh, testified about uh, terrorist attacks that Hamas had conducted uh, inside Israel. He presented uh, photographs, uh, gory photographs of the aftermath of some of those bombings, none of which the Holy Land Foundation had anything to do with. Mr. Dreidel, do you have any questions for Mr. Abbey? I do, Your Honor. Thank you. What is your rank in the ISA, Israeli security agency? My rank is manager. What is your specific title? I'm the legal advisor of the Counterterrorism Division. Now, in your work as someone who has researched in this area, have you taken any courses concerning Hamas in any learning centers, universities, or anywhere else? Not in the university, no. I wish there were some. So have you taken a course outside of ISA? Hamas out of the ISA? No. What books have you read on Hamas? I read books. Time of Hamas by Salah Mishal, From the Way of Allah to the Jihad, and another book by uh, Shakib, and another author I don't remember. Mm, a few articles from the universities. Have you written any works on the subject outside of the ISA that may have been published? Well, I'm not allowed to do that. I, I wish I could. And you're not part of any university. You don't hold a position as a professor or anything like that. No. And then the Raid Seller prosecution that started at the end of 2000, the investigation. Yes. That was the beginning of your involvement in this subject. That's correct. So all the things we're talking about that concluded before 2000, you, you've done by research. Most of it, most by research, self-research. Have you ever read a book about Zaykat committees? I didn't read a book. I assume maybe there is. Uh, I would like to read it. If the defense is un, 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 unaware of uh, the identity of the individual and is unable to do the kind of investigation that you would want to do to determine whether the witness is, has any biases or um, has um, uh, other past experiences that might undermine uh, his or her credibility and you're not able to do that work, that's a, that's a real cost to a fair defense. That's a very fair question and it's a, it's a very difficult issue. And we wrestled with that in the trial. And, but we felt like we could give them everything about this witness that they needed to be able to cross-examine the witness but for the name. The second uh, anonymous witness as well, who went by the name of Major Lior, 
Uh, they were there as representatives of the Israeli security apparatus to make the case against uh, people who were supporting needy Palestinians. Those weren't the only witnesses. In my estimation, they provided more flavor than substantive testimony in the case. And I think, but I think it was part of the evidence. I think the evidence in total established that these defendants knew that the money they were providing were actually material support, uh, providing material support to Hamas. So I, I couldn't Google you and find out anything about your work or your background. Is that correct? I Googled this morning. I found myself. We don't know your name. It said Avi. You helped prepare the government witnesses in that case. Correct. And you reviewed with the prosecutors which exhibits were to be put in and which were not to be put in. Well, not all the exhibits. We had a lot. But as part of them, yes. Concerning to the specific issue that I'm dealing with now. And all of those documents were seized either in Operation Defensive Shield in the spring of 2002 or later. Is that correct? Are you talking about the exhibits? Yes. Yes, if I am correct. And were the U.S. prosecutors given access to these military bases where the materials are? Objection. Withdrawn. Those materials that are the exhibits, they were being stored at Israeli military bases, correct? Correct. And were U.S. prosecutors given access to those military bases? If U.S. prosecutors... أكثر من ثمانية آلاف وثيقة الولايات المتحدة لم يكن عندها وثيقة واحدة أمريكية تدين مؤسسة الهولي لاند فاونديشن لا يوجد لا ممكن أن تتكلم عن أدلة ظرفية عن أدلة أو عن معلومات أو شكوك لكن لا يوجد دليل واحد إلا دليل إسرائيلي وهذه الوثائق تم التلاعب بها But the U.S. obviously had made a deal with Israel that if he came and testified it would, he would remain secret. His lawyers came with him. You are the legal advisor, and yet you have your own legal advisor. To be on the safe side. Are you looking at your lawyer? Is that what you're doing? Are you looking at your lawyer? Do you need to consult? Is it a crime? No. But do you need to consult with him? I don't want to get you in trouble. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I was asked with respect to Mr. Avi to allow him to consult with his legal advisor if he felt that answering a question on cross-examination might require the disclosure of classified information. I did grant this request. So, because he has a legal advisor seated near the rail in the courtroom, if Mr. Avi feels he needs to consult with his legal advisor, I have granted this permission. The government made a big effort to link our clients to anyone in their families who were um, Hamas supporters, like Michelle, uh, to Marzouk, who was a Hamas supporter. <laughs> غسان العشي إنه زوج بنت عمه بكون موسى أبو مرزوق ربطوا مفيد إنه أخوه من أبو خالد مشعل. In the communist era in the United States, we made it a crime to be a member of the Communist Party. We were afraid of communism, and we targeted people not for their acts, but for their associations, their membership with the Communist Party. Ultimately, the Supreme Court said that's unconstitutional. You can't punish somebody just because he's associated with the Communist Party. You have to show that he intended to further the illegal ends of the group, not just that he's associated with the group. Well, I think this material support statute, mm -hmm. under which the Holy Land Foundation board was prosecuted, is a guilt by association statute uh, in modern garb. Principal evidence for the defense in the case consisted of testimony from um, Edward Abington, 
who had been the uh, U.S. Uh, consul in Jerusalem. My name is Edward Abington. I'm a former American diplomat. I thir spent 30 years uh, dealing mainly with the Middle East, uh, specifically Arab-Israeli issues. My last overseas assignment was as the American Consul General in Jerusalem from 1993 to 1997. We never received any uh, warnings or uh, caution about dealing with the Holy Land Foundation. They were considered to be a legitimate uh, American charity and I was familiar with the work, with their work. Uh, they had a good reputation for uh, honesty and, and providing assistance uh, to the people who really needed it. The United States uh, has never labeled Zakat committees as controlled by Hamas or as being uh, terrorist organizations. And in fact, up until 2007, 2008, uh, AID was channeling assistance uh, through American NGOs working with Zakat committees. So the allegation that the Israelis made that these uh, organizations were basically controlled with Hamas was certainly not the view of the United States government at the time I was serving in Jerusalem, or for that matter afterwards. And that was very contradictory. I mean, it was like the left hand doesn't know what the right hand was doing. إن أعضاء لجنة الزكاة سواء الحاليين أو السابقين لا ينتمون إلى أي تنظيم سياسي كما أن الموافقة على جمعية لجان الزكاة في الضفة الغربية في بدايتها كان يفترض فيه الحصول على موافقة من الأردن وحاليا يجب الموافقة من وزارة الأوقاف التابعة للسلطة الوطنية الفلسطينية فلا يمكن لأي عضو من الأعضاء أن يكون ناشطا على المستوى السياسي في نفس الفترة التي كنا نتلقى فيها من مؤسسة الهوليلاند فاونديشن مساعدات كنا نحصل على مساعدات من مؤسسات أمريكية كاليو أس إيد والأنيرا وإنترناشنال إيد فرقت الجمعية من مؤسسة الجي اي زد الألمانية مبالغ تصل إلى 200 ألف يورو وبالإضافة إلى ذلك المشاريع الأخرى التي تلقيناها من مؤسسة اليو ان دي بي فهي مشاريع كبيرة وضخمة وبلغ حجم هذه المشاريع التي قدمت إلينا مبالغها تصل إلى مليوني دولار أمريكي The defense was trying to say look, uh, the justice department is alleging that the Holy Land Foundation is supporting terrorism because they're working with Zakat committees. But we have a long list of projects funded by the U.S. government working with American NGOs who worked with Zakat committees. And we have the documentation to show this. Uh, the, the court kept a lot of that documentation out of the trial. These defendants, particular defendants, were giving money to the Zakat committees knowing it was going to Hamas, whether it's legitimate or not, really isn't at issue. It's whether they knew that the money that was being funneled to the committees were actually going to Hamas. And I think we established that at trial. But the United States government was also giving money to the Zakat committee. Uh, you know, I don't remember that uh, as being that. Uh, you know, it's been a long time. At a, at a minimum, you shouldn't be prosecuted for providing charitable activity to a group that has not even been put on a list so that you have notice that you're not supposed to be aiding it. I mean, they checked the list. They, 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 the, the, the board of HLF could check the list and they would say, okay, here's the groups that are on the list. We're not going to support any of those. Here's groups that are not on the list. We can support those.
In order to fight these allegations, we had to read all of the discovery from the government that we could read, and that raised a big problem because there were 10 years of wiretaps um, that were all, almost all in Arabic, and we couldn't read here. We couldn't understand them. Our clients weren't allowed to read them or listen to them because they were classified. We also presented evidence from John Bryant, uh, who was a former congressman who represented the Holy Land Foundation after he left Congress. Well, in 1997, uh, the Holy Land Foundation hired me as an attorney to help them with the problem. I personally contacted the Federal Bureau of Investigation, and we met with leaders of the Dallas office of the Federal Bureau of Investigation on two occasions to say, we had seen these articles in the newspaper and wanted to know, are you, are, are, is the H Holy Land Foundation under investigation? And if so, wh why? And we had those meetings and uh, both cases that we were given no guidance, no advice, no confirmation that they were under investigation. I met with the number two man in the Israeli embassy, the Charge d'Affaires. I said, look, I don't know what your concerns are, but if you will convey to me what the concerns are, the Holy Land Foundation will operate in such a way that you're no longer concerned. Uh, he agreed that, that perhaps this was a good suggestion and he would get back to me. But uh, weeks passed and uh, he did not get back to me, so I contacted him and he informed me that his government had told him not to communicate any further with the Holy Land Foundation. a stunning defeat today for the government's war on terror as the Dallas jury failed to reach a verdict against five men accused of sending money to Middle East terrorists. The defendant's supporters call it a witch hunt against Muslims in the name of fighting terrorists. 19 days of jury deliberation, the government failed to get one single conviction. This jury had not been able to agree. Some of them voted f guilty for some charges and some voted not guilty, but it had to be unanimous. And there was not a single charge that the, where the jury was unanimous. So the case was over. We won. <laughs> This was a very joyous time for us. We were just beyond happy. And this was like a, a few moments of happiness that we had and that we could really hold on to. <laughs> But soon after that, the, the judge asked the prosecutor, will you retry the case? And he says, yes, your honor, I believe that we will. <laughs> 